Welcome to Movie Bitches. Bitches. Summer Camp 2023. After all of these movies, I feel like very few of them have really led me astray. I'm so glad. Yeah. Because um, I was worried. I get it. Mm, yeah. We'll see how many subscribers we have left. <laughs> Tonight's theme, crotchety athletic supporters. If you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. But first things first. But first things first, shout out to our Patreon supporters. $5 a month gives you ad-free early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing parties. Make sure to subscribe, share, ho, oh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Letterboxd. But yes, so anyway, yes, crotchety athletic supporters because Averill, young Averill was in no way interested in sports. Right. But she was interested in elderly uh, comedians, comedians around a sport uh, action. Yeah situation. We're here to talk about ladybugs yep. and surf ninjas. Yeah. And I would say they are both fairly campy. Yes. And um bizarre. Very bizarre. They both Ladybugs um... is surreal. And if you haven't watched Averill's trailer that she did where it was Ladybugs, but if it was directed by David Lynch, then you should absolutely watch it. I, I did do a pretty good job. You did, it. and it just is um uncanny how yeah. easily it yeah. could be done. It transferred. Yeah. Because yeah. every single extra in Ladybugs is doing a bit. A bit. And the production design Weird. to the nines, to the 23rds, it's Everything. just like... Everything. The colors and it's insane. Well, so should we talk about Ladybugs first? Sure. Ladybugs. Ladybugs from 1992 with a whopping 12% wow. on Rotten Tomatoes. Do we think that's fair? No. I think it could be higher. 33. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying it's fresh, but you know, 12, that's rough. Right. 45 even. It's getting close. It's a competent movie. Like yeah. there's a coherent plot. There's, um, you know, attempts at things. Yeah. Uh, there Jack is Hay some is there. humor. Jack Hay alone automatically gives it 20 points on Rotten Tomatoes. 100%. <laughs> Julie, look at the way you're eating. I thought you were getting in shape. What happened to the weightlifting class? Oh, I'm doing good. I mean, this is heavy. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, this must be my introduction to Rodney Dangerfield, I would imagine. Really? Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, maybe Robin Williams' impression of him but in I Aladdin? But I wouldn't have known. That's a good move. I can't believe it. I'm losing to a rug. I do distinctly recall putting the pieces together throughout my youth of Robin Williams in uh, Aladdin. Mm -hmm impressions and the moment when I realized what, the what it was, was, what he was doing. And I, I went, that. oh my God. Yeah. That's what that was. He was doing Jack Nicholson. Right? All right, Sparky, here's the deal. If you want to court the little lady, you got to be a straight shooter. Do you got it? We had talked about this in, a, in the earlier episodes where the 90s humor was so referential. Correct. And that's how you would learn about James Cagney from the Ninja Turtles movie. Not Cagney. <laughs> mm, you dirty rat. You killed my brother. You dirty rat. Mm. Having no idea who James Cagney was and finding out 10 to 15 years later, oh. You're right. They were talking about James Cagney the whole now, time. Now, neither of these had references. Neither had a John Wayne impression. Yeah. A little shocking. Oh. I'm surprised Rodney Dangerfield. Well, I guess he wasn't really doing impressions. Not really. So he, he was, was doing being himself. Rodney Dangerfield. And lots of face work. Boy, that face. That face. That face. That lovable face. That yep. face. That face. <laughs> How old do you think he was when they filmed this? 48. He was 69. Oh, wow. Good for him. Right? Wow. How long? He's not alive. Oh, no. No. Um, He's been dead for quite a while. Right. Yeah. On paper, right? We're looking at this movie. Okay. Ladybugs. A children's film? More or fam less. A family, family film. Film. With lots of sexual innuendo. Starring, mm -hmm. famously crude, 69-year-old yep. Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The only thing quicker than that is when I'm having sex. That's just such an interesting... How does that pitch get through, right? Right? Yeah. Right? You know, I don't know. Do, do... They definitely wouldn't make this movie, no. regardless of the sort of, like, dated things in it. They right. definitely wouldn't make this movie. No. Today. Who would you use? Like, who fits that bill? 
Maybe. Why did I keep wanting to say Phil Mickelson? But it's that's the golfer. That's the golfer. You want the truth, you can't handle the truth. Yay, he's goofing off. Oh, wow, that was my Nicholson impression. <laughs> good. <laughs> I do it sometimes when I play golf. No, as good as it gets. Phil Silvers. Why? Why? All right, here I come! It's so deep! It's so deep! Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. All right, Sparky, here's the deal. If you want to court the little lady, you got to be a straight shooter. Do you got it? Like he... I would watch Jack Nicholson in a Bad News Bears rip-off situation. Now, for sure. Bef like if this was back in the day, you could do... Walter Matthau in Bad News Bears. Oh, is Walter... Ma oh, right. No, not Walter Matthau, although wow. he's great, because yeah. he's also in Grumpy Old Men. Yes. Who's the other one? Jack Lemmon. Yeah, you're I mean, right, yes, but, but, but no. No, Jack Lemmon wouldn't be good in this part. It was Walter Matthau. Yeah. Who's in The Odd Couple? Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. It is. Yeah. Okay, great. Unless you're talking about the TV show. Then it's Jack Klugman and Tony Randall. No. Can two divorced men share an apartment without driving each other crazy? It was Jack. I was those. Yeah. You don't know the difference between a spoon and a ladle. My dad always loved that line. <laughs> Listen, you want to talk to me, buddy? Put down that spoon. Yeah, spoon! <laughs> you dumb ignoramus, that is a ladle. You did not know that's a ladle. But anyway, yes. So, ladybugs. Yes. I mean, we start and it's off the rails. And you looked in the mirror. You will lose us when you came here this morning. You will lose us! Helicopter shots right. of Denver? Denver. With a voiceover from, you know, a, a sort of Sigmund Freud, uh, Austrian sounding motivational speaker. Right. When people criticize you, fill you with insecurity and self doubt, rip it out! We eventually see his face, and he's in the mirror. It was Very a close. dramatic toupee. Yes, it was giving. Oh, oh, of the of the German. Of the guy. Yeah, it was giving. Have you gotten to that episode of Frasier with um, Mr. Rugly? Mr. Rug, Mr. Rug. <laughs> Lee, Mr. Rugly. Mr. Rugly, and he's uh. got the toupee, and he keeps going. The page from Radioland Murders. Uh huh. Mr. Rugly. Wow. In Fraser. In Fraser. Love that. Yeah. Maybe I did see it, but I don't think so. I, keeps, I'm confusing it now. He keeps breaking everything in with the With Clifford. Oh. Oh. And, and don't tell someone that they have a great rug or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> but I didn't say nice wig, Uncle Martin. I said bestest looking wig. I believe there is a difference. Who knew? All Toupees of and models. Yes. Large of... scale models. Of buildings of and, buildings and, and such. parks, et cetera. Maybe everything was like in a regrowth, right? It was like, um, we're, what's that called? Were you, you were city planning, you uh -huh. know? Yeah. Everything was like, let's. The business is booming, but yeah. like as a society. Right. I mean, in the 80s, there was a lot of construction. What they call in the pros, a rebuilding year. But yeah, him like breaking all that stuff in his office with the. Yeah. And the, that was, that's literally the, the Frasier episode with the. Oh, Mr. weird. Mr. Rugly, it's fair. This is. Oh, yes. He, he breaks, breaks the, the model and he's like, oh, oh, it was my. This is the giraffe from my bookcase? Yes, yes, it is. I'm sorry. I was admiring it. It broke apart in my hands. But you know, if your child is anything like mine, he'd be delighted to make you a new one. Actually, my father made it <laughs> after his stroke. Sir. Rugly, Mr. Rugly. <laughs> if you don't do the pause, it sounds like you're ugly. Yeah, mm, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I did see that episode. It's so good. That's very gracious of you, Mr. Ugly. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that didn't come out right, did it? Well, the way I, I just said your name right now sounded like I called you Mr. Ugly. I assure you it won't happen again. See, it's just a matter of separating the R's. Anyway. We're not here to do a Frasier rewatch, although... Oh my god, we'd be here forever. Oh, forever. Motivational speaker. Yeah. Because you're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it, people like you. <laughs> because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Hello, I'm Stuart Smalley. <laughs> that Al Franken SNL sketch where he's no. talking in the mirror and he's saying... Anyway, it was very that. Great, love it. I'm great! I'm wonderful! I'm great. I'm wonderful. Everybody likes like me. me. Yeah. And <laughs> everyone in the audience, a little weird. A little weird. Just like everyone's pulling focus. Yes. 
but they're not because how can you beat that face? Well, you know sure, what I'm I do get like, it. You're they right. They needed to surround him with other odd people. But it was kind of like the luggage twink in Mafia Mama, but times at the everybody, Every, everyone's everyone. the luggage twink from Mafia Mama. <laughs> yeah. Every single one of them. Yeah. Hey, Nikki, it's Mom. I just want to let you know I landed safe. Who's that? What's their story? What's, What's going that? on with them? Right. Look Who's at this that outfit. Oh this? my God, they're having a whole entire moment. Yeah. I mean, we kind of did, but I would be into like rewatching this and literally just not paying attention oh, at, at all. all and being like, what's their story? What's going on with them? Yeah. What's going on with them? It was a balance. Uh, and I agree. I feel like you could easily watch this movie and just pay attention to, to the, the extra work. Yeah. The set design, it also keeps the costumes, you, the... That's stuff that keeps you in it. If all of that wasn't there, this movie would be a lot less enjoyable. Yes, certainly. You're right, because then you would have been bored. Yeah. At least when you were like, okay, whatever. Like, you're like, what? Who's that person? What's this thing now? What's... Oh who's... Why are... Who's that that weird man in the stadium that's like having this whole who's outfit? And... woman in the tank top and tie. Yeah. <laughs> Mom and the son in the background and the what? With the, in the at the by the Gatorade. Yeah. Why? What's going on with what? that? Pearls. Yes. And and a strapless dress. Laurel. Yeah. To to this uh, middle school soccer game. Right. Championship. Why? Also, why not? Well, sorry. But why? Yeah. Wild stuff. Really wacky. Mm -hmm. Set design. Yeah. Production design. Extra work. Mm -hmm. Well, and the motivational speaker was called Dr. Van Camp. So. Oh, wow. I mean, come on. They know what's up. Yeah. He was also giving pee pee caca duty from the from high anxiety. Oh yes. Sorry, I'm late. Forgive me for bringing the kids. I couldn't get a sitter. In a world of predominantly male oriented psychology, it was only natural to arrive at the term pee. Pee pee envy. Are you saying there's absolutely no validity to? Pee pee envy. Pee pee and the cocky duty. Well, let's say for the sake of argument, cocky duty. I'd have to say professionally that cocky duty has very little to do with the future sexual development of the adolescent. Rodney Dangerfield. It's it's interesting because his character is, you know, the best salesman. Right, smarmy, whatever, full of flirty, confidence. Yeah, you know, yeah. gift of gab. But then he has to go talk to the boss, and he gets all clammed up. Right, and he has, and he's taking these motivational classes. Right, that never really goes anywhere. Um, no, ish. Like they don't explore that. But we could. I guess we the read motivational it. class helps with the the cute little girl, the glasses. Right, we tried hair down, glasses off. No, glasses on, hair back up. Now let's just get that hair right back up. Um, oh no, no, put the glasses back on. <laughs> Let me see what your glasses off too. Will you take your glasses off? Look at those brown eyes. You're cute as a button. Other than that, it never comes up again. But like even as a character arc. Right. Like it it's it's there, but you you're really digging digging down, you know. But you're right, but it is everything else that they tell us about him is yeah. like, oh, he's so great at selling and pitching and you know, schmoozing and boozing and whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You could sell anything, Chester. Yeah, I bet in your day you sold a few things yourself, huh? Oh. <laughs> Plenty of heat left in the old furnace, huh, baby? <laughs> 
Yeah. Maybe so. that's just with women. Right. It's Not... with the receptionist and Jack A. Oh my God, Jack A. So apparently, okay. Whoopi Goldberg was offered Would've the role, it. but she decided to do a sister act instead. Good for you, bitch. That's the correct choice. Oh my God. Um, Could you imagine how... Like, our world would have changed. It would be so much... Drearier. Drearier. We'd have so much less Kathy and Jimmy. Oh, um, my God. Although maybe Kathy and Jimmy would still be in it, but it would just be so, so sad. I don't know how you do Sister Act without Whoopi. If it's, like, five years earlier, Shelley Long. Does that work? Does it work? Different movie. Different movie. But I could absolutely see Shelley Long doing that part. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. It's just a different it's movie. It's just a different movie. Yeah. But I could see it. And and then it, like Sister Act 2. Or Bette Midler, to be honest. Sure. Yes. Could be brassy oh. singer. Let's yeah, do it with the choir. Yeah. And actually, maybe Bette's better. Probably. As, not, not better than Whoopi, but just as like a... No. But yes. I could see Bette as like crass and, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. it has that... She could Vegas, do... you know... Yeah. Uh, oh, she's a Vegas showgirl going to go she's, live you know, in hiding. Real, Real yeah. brassy and yeah, yeah. yeah it would be a different movie, but I would, I would, I'd be willing to watch it. Yeah, I would, I would too. But again, then too, like Sister Act two, I mean, probably I mean, wouldn't happen. Right, yeah. And what, part of what I love about both of those movies is that you could tell that Whoopi was involved in so many ways, and to I appreciate tailor it to so much her, of it. you know, personal um, best. Yeah, and like representation, you of know, course. like like I think that that was such, especially with Sister Act two. It's like such a key part. God, I love those movies. Anyway. But anyway, Jack Hay as his assistant uh, in this office that I guess Sorry, I'm just gonna, yeah, I got distracted. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do we do a summer camp? Do I get mine where it's movies that Andrew loved that everyone else loved too? Sure. And it's just, you know. It's Sister Act 2. Sister Act. Although Sister Act 2 is on a different list. That is true. Sequels that are better than the original, which we are, are working, working on. on. There has been forward momentum on this, but it's a big, it's, it's a tall a, order. It's a tall, and you know, it, it requires verification. Yeah, we, we I had to watch, watch a, Short Circuit and Short Circuit 2 to actually scratch it off the list. Yeah, to verify that, in fact, the first one is better. <laughs> yes, he is gold-plated. No, the rest of the movie is not good. It's not good. I mean, Steve Goldenberg and Ali Sheedy are not there. They're, They're not there. Yeah. Johnny no. Five can't carry the whole movie, I'm no. sorry to say. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we could absolutely do that. I love that. Yeah. But anyway, Jack Hay, yes. as his assistant in this office that's full of plants, plants, I guess he likes fishing, although we never see any, there's never like, you know, hey, Matthew, should we go fishing? Sure. You know, nothing. Real man out of the house. Uh, yeah. Oh, now that also goes on my list. Man of the house. I loved that movie as a kid. I did too. I don't think it's probably very good, but. Might be fun. Might be fun. Isn't there one with Brendan Fraser? Concrete Jungle. Jung jung jungle George, the Jungle. Well, there's George of the Jungle. No, with, Jungle. The, George of the Jungle with Brendan Fraser. Right. Then there's Jungle to Jungle with Tim Allen. Oh, okay. And Martin Short. What's Matika? Ah! Also getting even with Dad. The Macaulay Culkin Ted Danson. Oh. Um, oh, that's like lots of uh, stepdad revenge. My we, dad's a kind of like a... Like a con man, but oh. in a kind of, you know, like in a, sh you know, schlubby kind of right. way. And he suddenly has responsibility for him for reasons. And they're... Interesting that there's so many movies in the 90s about shitty dads learning to yeah. be involved with their kids. Yeah. It was a growth period. Yes. What they call in the pros, a rebuilding year. We were growing in, in real estate and in dads. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if it was part of that transition from single earning families yeah. to like double or, you know, right? Uh -huh. Like women in the workplace. Of course. Dads have to I'm pick sure. up some of the slack. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'm sure. But anyway. anyway this is not an American studies. Uh... No, but we are. We're getting into it. We're talking about the, you know, we're, you know. Rodney Dangerfield wants his promotion. He right. goes to the big boss's office. Because that's also this plot, right? Oh. That's also this plot. Yeah. Oh, he needs the promotion so that they can get married so that she can quit her job. He has like an offhand comment about it. Well, he says he doesn't want her to um, get fired. Get he fired. wants her to he quit her job. He wants her to job. be able to quit so sure. he can provide for provide her. Provide for her as a nearly 70 year old man. Well, <laughs> Starting their lives together. <laughs> she yeah. had that wedding book binder ready. Oh yeah. I was like, "Is this your friends?" I was confused. Is this, you know what? Like, okay, we we never get an answer. No. But the reason that they couldn't get married was until he got the promotion. I really, was that her rule? I think was it was a, a financial for the wedding security, itself, or was it or, like a? Well, and then they go, that's a weird scene where they go to the rundown house because they're right. buy a new house, even though right. their old house seems fine. I don't know. I don't know. It seemed yeah. just to me like you guys can get married, 
And then if he gets the promotion, great. You, I feel like maybe this was written. I don't know, but maybe this was written for not Rodney Dangerfield, maybe. Ne- nearly seventy-year-old Rodney sure. Dangerfield, and uh, maybe like a younger man who's. But he seems timeless. He does seem timeless. Like, like I did not I think he was, was seventy years old. Shocked. Yeah. When I read that fact. Yeah. Wow. So sharp as attack. Not too many stunts. No, he was not playing soccer. He was not playing soccer. And, oh my gosh. So anyway, uh, long story short, needs to get a promotion. Yeah. Coaching the girls' uh, soccer team. Right, because... Knows nothing about soccer. Yep. His soon-to-be stepson, great at soccer, bad at uh, school. So what do we got to do? We got to put him in drag so he can be the star of, of the, the soccer, team soccer team and try and help them win so he can get that promotion. <laughs> it's a reverse she's the man. Yeah. Although this came out before she's the man, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> I think She's the Man came out in like 2004? Wow. Three, four? Okay, great. Maybe even seven? Like it was... No. It was definitely in the 2000s. 2006. Ha! My God. Ha! Oh, because we, well, we did get a, a pretty good pottery smash. Hey, Matthew, catch. And a, uh, I'm just going to say it, a sleepaway camp reference. Was there a lobster Who's? Pot? Who's... Oh. <laughs> Guess who? Guess who? Burt Reynolds. Guess who? Um, uh, Ricky. Nope. Uh, Burt Reynolds. You're getting warmer. <laughs> Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. No, close. But Rodney Dangerfield looks great. <laughs> yes. For a nearly 70-year-old gentleman. Yeah, great, I don't know, but as good as he's ever looked. I, you know, I don't. Well, is this is like that thing where like when people look old young, yeah. they seem old forever Ever. and yet Walter Matthau. Walter Matthau, Betty White. Like, yeah. you know, when I was watching Golden Girls in whatever middle school high school i was right. like well she's clearly like 87 years old you know and then you watch it now you go she was like 45 what, what? yeah that's you know? true yeah uh, and it's no she did betty white it's just that thing no, but like, like betty just... white at 100 and betty white at 50 not that different you know and good for you bitch yeah good for you but anyway the production design yes mullen industries which we, have, we know no idea what they ever do they build models and, of buildings and he's in sales they have a sales department with a fridge and a filing cabinet yeah. and models and this was so weird and Mullen's office has a sarcophagus yeah. and all these statues trophies toys a dog this, on a bench and it a... was just like so freaking bizarre yeah everything was too much too much um but I, I do prefer that to too little uh yes certainly it was not sparse I like the look of this uh-huh. better than honestly like a Christopher Nolan movie you know what I mean yes I like colors I like bright well, shiny that is things key to camp, as and we I'm discussed. not saying that Christopher Nolan needs to start you know changing his aesthetic well but it would be you know, nice he could, if he embraced he could shake all it color up. He could shake and it up. some light. He could shake it up a little bit. But, but, but I'm sick of every movie that's serious yeah. looking bleak and gray. Yes. Tragic. Pale and tragic. And the doorbell rang and it was Mrs. White looking pale and tragic. House of Gucci. Honestly, you know, throw yeah. some tie-dye t-shirts behind Lady Gaga. In the tent. Get some colors yeah. in here. Come on. Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know. It made it feel more... Indie? Surreal. Surreal, certainly. Bizarre. I don't know what world this was in. It's, but that's what I like. It created a different place. Universe, like, yeah. We're, we're in Duck World. Yes. You know, yes. we're in 90s Dayglo yes. world. Yes. And everything that could have a ladybug print on it will. Absolutely. Why Polka not? dots everywhere. Why not act on what I have said? Act on what I've said, Dad. Remember the wife? Act, act on what I have said, darling. I was like, I like this. Oh, is that what she said? Yes. When she's like... Act on what I have said. Act on what I have said. I thought she said, I've done what I said. No. Act, act on, on what, what I, I have said. said. I love that. Right? Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I talked to you. Now do it. <laughs> yes. Well, and in this scene when he's trying to talk to... I couldn't figure out if this was actually happening or like on purpose or not. So he's he's trying to talk to the boss. Hey, Mr. Mullen, I want to get this promotion, you know, blah, yep. blah, 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 and it cuts to the boss. Oh, yeah, it seemed like a freeze frame. My sales are number one, you know, <laughs> you know, and I figured that, uh, you know, I'm due, uh, well, you know, I'm entitled. Uh, I, I figured, you know, uh, I mean, I feel if you can see your way clear, you know, and, you know, my girlfriend, Bess, and we... And it genuinely, and I was like, is this a joke? Right, did, did they, they not, not get enough coverage? coverage of him, so they just freeze framed it? It's very strange. Yeah. It works as a joke. Yeah. Um, that maybe was intentional or not. I'm not sure. Yeah. Would you stop staring at me like that? 
All right, fine. Is that the way you want to play it? You want to play the staring game? Fine. Okay, look, maybe this was a bad, I, maybe this was a bad idea. Ah! Ah! So yes, uh, he has to coach the girls' soccer team, the ladybugs. Right. He's like, oh, okay, it'll be fine. I don't know anything about soccer, turns out, but I can just, you know, do what they've always done because they keep winning. And yeah. it turns out that only one of the players uh, is back. Which of you were on last year's team? One? Only one? You know, then it's this whole thing of typical, like, well, oh, I'm... we're all going to learn and grow together, and how are we going to do this? By the help of my soon-to-be stepson. Look, I don't want to get in your car, so stop following me. Matthew? Are you all right, Matthew? Oh, yeah, I'm fine, Mrs. Yolick. He's not a stranger. He's just strange. Okay, Chesterfield, what do you want? Well, and um, Sally Ann Blofeld with her turn-ons. Good-looking guys. Music. Good-looking guys. Pizza. Good-looking guys. Staying up late. And good-looking guys. Cute boys. Like, all of that. Silly. It's like Blofeld, was that like, do we think that was a 007? Reference? Just like a little... Maybe? I'm gonna say yes. Yes. Because why not? Mm. And we're introduced to uh, Vanessa Shaw, Mullen's daughter, who is the love interest in Hocus Pocus. Right. Yeah, crazy. So yes, we're introduced to Matthew, who has no time for school, or right. you know, he's he's naturally gifted at sports and generally given a free pass because he's cute, but he is embarrassed around girls. Right. And he's figuring it out. He's in a he's in a rebuilding year. His gay friend is helping him try and flirt. I don't even know what to say. Flatterer. And girls like that. Tell her you love her eyes, her lips, her hair, the way she parts her hair. In fact, tell her you love all her parts. What, is he supposed to be, what, 15? Yes, that is exactly what they is said it? he is. That's what they said? Okay. Because he, there was something about turning 16. Mm. I don't remember why now, but there was. Mm. Nope, never mind. That's that was Surf, Surf Ninjas. Ninjas. I'm going to be 16 in two weeks. I know your highness. When Eddie Reyes Jr. was playing a 15-year-old. Moto Surf! And he was what? 19? Not 15. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Other age discrepancies that uh, I think you'll be not shocked by. Great. Uh, but yes, yeah, so Matthew goes to practice and this fantasy sequence. Oh my, yes. So he sees it right, he has a crush on Hocus Pocus Girl. Kimberly. Kimberly. Yes, her in the in the sh in this movie, her name is Kimberly. So when he's asked to help, yes. No way, man. Wait. Wait a Kimberly's minute. Kimberly's here. I'm in love. Let me now fantasize as 14-year-old boy. This scene is simultaneously two things. It's, oh my god, adults thought this was okay. Dream, 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 dream. But also, as a 15-year-old fantasizing, oh, isn't that sweet? Right. You know, I mean, Starts I was... Starts off in like a swimsuit. Hey, and then... It... She's not fully naked. No. Know? It's not porkies. Right. No. Um, and then they're going on a date, and then they're going on another date to like a fancy museum. Well, they're, they're... No, they're on a... They're on multiple red carpets yeah. and they're jet setting as if they're you know like he's he's in a leather jacket yeah they're so they getting literally go a, on a jet onto a jet they're getting hamburgers you know fancy oh, hamburgers look, look fancy i mean you well they were under a, it's like a, a silver cloche it's fancy, but otherwise you know yeah, yeah, and then no. you go Ugh, yeah kids these days i don't know then they're getting married he has Sorry. he has good intentions what i just blink check also goes oh. on and richie rich are both on, the, on my summer camp list i like that you liked boys with that had a lot of like planning and business sense and what's the you know, entrepreneurial you yeah, know like that hello. kind of no, no, I'm, I'm excited like I, that makes sense you know it's like the, oh these sensitive neat clean boys that were like you know are really to good at like nerdy organizing and wanted to money use computers and, you know, to like, you know, buy things yeah and, yeah yeah, you know. Anyway, sorry. But I, it did. It did make me. It was, I was like, uh, you know, if we look at it from just a character point mm -hmm. of Matthew, the fifteen-year-old boy, it's sort of sweet. It is. Oh, and he, we find he's a good kid. He's a good kid. You know, our wedding. You know, what is this? Oh, he picked yeah. out her dress. Yeah. He picked out polka dots for his. Of Come course. Because, you know, ladybugs, ladybugs, obviously. He graciously picked out miniskirts for her bridesmaids. I don't know. It was so weird. Yeah. So bizarre. Yeah. That's what we are led to believe he envisioned yes. as the soccer ball was coming toward him. And then, you know, because of slow her. Slow motion. Yes. 
the flowers in her hair. Yeah, it was so it was much. Really, lots of Everly Brothers. Lots of 50s, I think because of the age group of the writers and directors that mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. putting these movies forward, there was a lot of 50s nostalgia. Sure. He goes to Johnny Rockets. Kid, you've had enough. You're going to spoil your dinner. Why don't you go on home? No, I don't want to go home. Come on. Give me another one. So yes, because of his budding love. All right, girls, meet our new ladybug, Martha. Aunt Martha is coming. Oh, Aunt Martha's coming? Aunt Martha. Aunt Martha's coming? And so, yeah, that that is... Uh, another sleepaway camp reference. Yeah. Crossover. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. But yes, we, we have discovered upon rewatching all of these movies, drag yep. is a very prominent feature. I love that <laughs> for you. Oh, here you are. We'll run along now, dear. Come on, dear. <laughs> Yeah, totally do. Oh, this was some day drag. It will also just be the idea that she wouldn't be like, um, is that you, coach? Chester. Chester? She was really busy fucking her volleyball coach. Yeah, she is horny on main. Volleyball. Volleyball. So many connections. Wow. How come Angela gets to talk to the boys all day and we have to play volleyball? But you didn't watch Sleepaway Camp until much later. Much than later, this. college. Yeah. yeah. But we can connect the dots now. For childhood April. Very prominent. Farcical shenanigans. <laughs> Another common denominator impromptu musical sequence. Oh, yes. Love that. I want to love you like a lover should. You're fine. So kind. Roddy Dangerfield singing Great Balls of Fire. It's not good. No. But Jack Hay. Yes. And then we find out it's diegetic. Yeah. I chew my nails and I twiddle my thumb. I feel nervous, but it show is fun. Well, that took me out. It was so, and it was so unnecessary. Well, you know what? They needed it for their business's booming montage. Which it nailed. Which at some point, add this to the list. I really do want to make a business's booming montage montage. <laughs> It'd be so long. It'd be so long. What would the song? I, you, would, you would blend I think that's part of it, right? You discover just, maybe you mix songs. Maybe some of them, you know, you just kind of take the overarching themes yeah, and yeah. you intercut between them all. And you don't know which one is which and it doesn't matter. It's just a bunch of charts of well, green it, arrows. Do we edit them together? Uh huh. Or is it just, here's this montage, here's this montage, here's this montage? Or is it like, you know, soccer games abound, selling baby food abound? You know, like, I don't, do they? I mean, I, Baby uh, Boom absolutely it was the inspiration for businesses booming montage montage. Any Nancy Myers movie or uh, what's her husband or ex husband's name that actually directed some oh, of those? Russ Myers. No, he did Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Yes. And Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, which you still haven't seen, correct? Uh, I have not. I've only seen Valley of the Dolls. Oh boy, are you in for a fucking treat? Shaw. Something Myers Shaw. Shire. Shire. Charles something Shire. Okay, great. That man. Yeah. He loves a business's booming montage. Well, you know, she wrote them. They wrote sure, them together. Sure, 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 you sure, know, sure. Blah, 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 blah. those are the yeah, Penny Marshall movies. Oh, yeah. Ripe with business's booming montage. Or sports is booming. That's the same yeah. thing. That's yeah. business, right? Yeah, League of Their Own. Mm -hmm. So, quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more almost septuagenarian Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> But yes, we're introduced to Martha. The wig is not as bad as you expect. No, it really, it's the best wig of the wigs in it's the movie. It's the best wig of the wigs, including Jack Hay's wigs. <laughs> you know, considering in this world, Rodney Dangerfield bought this at Party City, CVS. Sure. You know, for some pharmacy, like yeah. considering. We no, actually. We got wigs today. Actually, we find out later that Jack Hay picked out Jack that wig. Jack Hay did pick out the wig. She and that makes perfect it. sense. Absolutely. Actually, give her the credit that, that she, she is, is entitled, entitled to. to. Why can't you give me the respect that I'm entitled to? Because a woman doesn't always say no. She doesn't always say no. Oh my God, it's so silly. It says a young lady, you always say no. Now wait a minute now, you don't always say no. I mean, if the mood is right and you're having a few drinks and some handsome man comes up to you, you eyeing him, he's eyeing you, the music is on, you both want to do your thing, you say no, you got to be crazy. Well, suppose he has a gold card, a new Porsche or something, you're going to say no now. I lost out on a trip to Hawaii for saying no. But Martha has to get her first dress. I mean, this is when we really start to get into some hilariously inappropriate. Um, I mean, this is just a series of pedophile jokes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be finished soon. Ow! Take it easy, that hurts. Ow! All right, don't worry. If it's too tight, you'll get used to it. 
And they're so inappropriate. Hold on, I'm almost finished. You know. Ow, it doesn't fit. Right. Oh, if it if it's too tight, it'll, you'll get used to it or something like that. Like just wow. Well, what a cute little girl. And what's your name? <laughs> She falls off that chair and yeah. this um, store. Oh, yeah. Neon, 90s, yep. oversized t-shirts, baseball caps, just the whole thing. Which reminded me, okay. the Maxfield Parish poster that's in their house uh -huh. was in our house. Wow. In our bathroom forever. Weird. That was weird. Huh. I don't know if, if it was like the chicken and the egg, like ladybugs came first and, and then, then the Maxfield Parish. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you so. didn't pick it. I didn't pick it. No. But I don't know if as a child I put that together. They sure. that the same oh, yeah, poster. the same goes with the Wii in the bathroom. I don't know. I'm not I, sure. I don't know. Yeah. I um yeah, the production design in this like the how their house and so all of the artwork everywhere. The barn in the, the Colorado. Wall, the whatever. entire wall sized frontier painting. Yeah. Where did that come from? Why the, is it there? The insane, the huge uh, Sergeant Pepper's poster. Yeah. The enormous Join the Army poster in his bedroom. In his bedroom. Lots of army. Yes. Things in the '90s. It was a lot of jo you know join up and like, there's the Coach Bowl. You know the the drill sergeant coach guy. Only two kind of people on a soccer field: the quick and the dead. That's quick. Yes. Yes. That's fast. They ought to tell that guy the war's over. Oh, you're right. Yes, Army E. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, Joe Sergeant. Yes, Bill Joe Sergeant. Seven. Sergeant. This whole scene with the bathroom and all of the extras here, the guy that really oh, has to take yeah. a shit, and then Granny from Looney Tunes. Right. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's the other door. Everyone is doing the most. Yeah. The lesbian soccer coach. Oh. You're a loser, loser. Chester. Doing <laughs> the most. Cash, you are a loser. Just the most. She flew right past 11. I mean, it was. Well, I'm Coach Annie with the Beavers. And so far this year, we're undefeated. And I heard about your team. So far this year, you've lost two. Well, Coach Chester, make ready to make it number three. Ludicrous speed. It was. <laughs> she went into plaid. It yeah. was that nuts. <laughs> They've gone to plaid. Chester! Chester, you loser! Chomp those beavers! Chomp yeah, those, those beavers! beavers. <laughs> We're gonna crush you, Chester! Crush those bugs! Crush those bugs! Chomp those beavers! I mean, this movie does fundamentally not understand middle school girls, which is oh. uh, fun. Um, oh, when they all go skinny dipping in broad daylight? No. Girls are going skinny dipping. Everyone's going skinny dipping. It's that late night. Oh, we're right. trying to be Ooh, uh, dark scandalous and, with yeah. the boys, or even it was, it was throw the ball. Yes, <laughs> from what hot? Oh, they're total nymphos. Throw the ball. Yes. Or um, Parent Trap, where they like well, that a dare. That was more of a dare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. was just, hey, you know what little middle school girls like? They all like, want to just, go, just skinny. go skinny dipping. And what do you say, huh? I don't know, Billy. Why don't you start with Ada? The hell with you, then. You don't know how to have any fun anyway. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And it didn't have to be skinny dipping. No. It could have been like... And it still would have been just as like, I can't go in a bathing suit, suit, you know? Right. I don't have one. Just a minute, Daphne. You haven't got a bathing suit. She doesn't need one. I don't have one either. Ah, see? She doesn't have one either. You don't? One, two, like yeah. it would be pretty obvious. Although I did, so I did just rewatch Some Like It Hot because, you know, I'm uh, self-care. Okay. And there's the whole scene where they're in the bathing suits. You know, or whatever, and they are, you know, they're old fashioned, and sure. they sort of have a little mini skirt. Okay. But I just, I had never thought about it before, and I was like, was Jack Lemon tucking? Oh. I don't think so, but, but perhaps. Yeah. Well, there's one thing I envy you for. What's that? You're so flat-chested. Clothes hang better on you than they do on me. 
Interesting. I suddenly had a new perspective on that yeah. scene yeah. in this house with oh, the yeah. indoor open floor plan, yeah. volleyball court. Yep. That then we we it was one shot. It was one pan shot. Pan out to the dining room that looks over. Or was it maybe like an informal dining room? Maybe. That like, you know, off the kitchen. With the spiral staircase. And the, oh my God, so much going on. So much happening. The marble walkway wall entry. It's a lot. So much happening. Yeah. I do think the biggest laugh we got out of the whole movie was with the, the fly ball. <laughs> it definitely was. We do enjoy a basic... Pratt fall, yeah. you know, <laughs> destruction, yeah. injury yeah. that really does. Ah! Whoa, yeah, it was, it was, it was good. really it did good. Make me, yeah, it, it made me laugh. Just a Boom. direct hit. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Bess, uh, poor yes. old Bess, has has discovered the. Ooh, now I I don't know why because everything all of her scenes happen in the kitchen. I was really nostalgic and distracted by the old Honey Nut Cheerios box on top of the fridge. I noticed that too. Anyway, we were talking about this movie. Um... <laughs> she was in the kitchen, Bess. She finds out. Bess here? Mom. Martha. Chester? Bess. <laughs> What's going on here? Matthew, why are you dressed like that? Dr. Scott! Janet! Chester? Bad! Rook! Mom! Dr. Scott! Janet! Bad! Martha! Janet! Dr. Scott! Bess! Bad! Rook! Oh my God, you've corrupted my son, which I mean, is fair. Oh yeah, this was an appropriate response. So that's the new team that he was playing on. You know, it's one thing to lie to me, but to corrupt my son? Mostly, yes. You know, Especially, you lied to me and you kept this from me. You involved and... my son. Yep. Um, if this movie was made now, uh -huh. this would be a totally different conversation. Absolutely. And it would be kind of fun. It would be you know? interesting, be right? Interesting. I think the joke now would be she wouldn't even, it wouldn't phase her because she would be so ready to say, whatever you want, darling. Sure. Of course. Whatever you need to, however you're expressing yourself. If that's who yourself. you are, then that's no, no, no. Right. And he's I like, love you no matter what. And he's like, oh no, it's just for farcical because I like, you know, whatever. She's like, no, no, no darling. You don't whatever. Have to She's like, it. so yeah. over. Like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, that would be the joke now. Yeah. Classic down in the dumps. I'm going to go uh, drink it at my favorite watering hole slash Johnny Rockets for a milkshake. Yep. Yeah. Frequented by Janet Jackson. And Milly Vanilli. Vanilla Ice, it said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think those were names of drinks. I don't think it was. Oh, you think? I don't think they were claiming that Janet Jackson went to this been to that Denver, Denver Johnny Rockets. No. <laughs> Fair. Maybe that was just they named or something. I don't know. It was odd. Oh, but most, I noticed it. The most plays on the jukebox, maybe. Sure. Sure. Well, you tell me. I think that this is funny. This is a funny idea. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield's at a CD bar, you know, a bar, right. and and Matthew goes to a milkshake, you know. Give me another. Give me another one. You've had enough. No, I need another one. It's silly. It's, it's silly. It's fun. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I'm yeah. not mad at it. There ain't nothing you can tell me that I ain't heard before. What happened was I, I took a son and I, I dressed him up like a girl, and I talked him into playing with me. But the bartender. At the actual bar, mm -hmm. um, I was like, Oh, did you figure it out? I figured out, I was like, This man, uh, I'm so connected to this person. And at first, sometimes the answer is, Oh, from it was movie. from Ladybugs. But no, he's in Dracula Den loving it. Vampires live at the castle. Vampire? Yes, they are the undead. They rise from the coffins at night. Which I've seen. 45,000 times, and Robin Hood Men in Tights, uh, which I've seen a ton of times, and Foul Play. He's the theater manager. You shouldn't go to picture shows like this and smoke that stuff if it's gonna affect you the way it does, huh? The lady on his lap, and he's like, Yes, Darling. yes, 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 yes. I gotta go warm up the weenies. Sylvia, where are you going, honey? Look, I'm sorry, Harry. Intermission's in 20 minutes, and I gotta go warm up the uh, weenies. Yeah. So it's him. Wow. Chuck McCann. Of course. Character actor, Chuck McCann. So, it's the big final game. They the championship. Have to, yeah, if he wins this, then he gets a promotion. If he loses, then he's... Fired? I don't know. But then Jack Kay would lose her job. I know, that's why he can't fuck it up. God, she's so great. So great. You can't quit now, you lose your job. And if you lose your job, I'll lose my job. Then you have no 
future, and I don't have no car, no dishwasher, no TV, no furniture. You can't quit now. I gotta quit. Coach, these kids is driving me nuts. I wish that, that Rodney Dangerfield and J.K. had done more buddy pictures. I would have loved that. Because I really actually enjoyed their dynamic I did too. quite a bit. Bringing down the house with Rodney Dangerfield and Jack. You know, I think it would have a... Uh, Still doesn't work. It, it, could, it could have a possible uh, better success rate. It could. Maybe. The script is garbage. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield would have just... He would have rewritten... He would have been improv half the time. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Whatever. And yeah. I feel like he can get away with a lot more than Steve, Steve Martin. Martin, who's sort of, you know, more sweet. You That's know, true, whatever. yeah. Anyway, uh, we can stop bringing up... Bringing down the house. Absolutely. <laughs> We're at the big championship game. Yes, Martha can't be there. Martha isn't coming. She can't come. Because, you know, um, the best forbid it. Yeah. And then Kimberly oh, is best. not there. Sorry, I, I just can't. Poor game best. I can't not, yeah. Oh, best, my best. Go to poor game best. Did you, have you seen? Audra McDonald? Yes. Really? Is that what you think? Yes. <laughs> of course. That's what I was going to say, of course. Of course. Best forbid it. Kimberly not here because her parents said no you can't play because we don't want you to embarrass us because we're Just assholes because you hit those bikers <laughs> Okay, well she because she always kicks the ball like it was a field goal it goes too too high and she too should far. she should be a the sequel should be she joins she the, the football, football team, team. Uh, in in drab then it's uh, just one of the guys which is another great I'm dressed in drab well, isn't that... Role reversal. Also the... She's the man. She's the man. Yes. About the boy? What's that? About a boy? About... No, that's like... Um, that's the Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Nicholas Holt. Tony oh, Collette. wow. Rachel wow. Weisz. Oh, my God. Yeah. I remember liking it when it came out, and then I, I never wanted to watch it, it again. It was kind of sad, yeah, wasn't it? I watched it a couple times. Yeah, yeah, Nicholas Hornby. You know, it's kind of melancholy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's the championship game. <laughs> it's down to the wire. Yep. Matthew is wearing a... Really quite fabulous. Um, oh. Red with Converse yeah. button down, and yeah. like I want it. Yeah. So let's if anyone sees that at a thrift put store, put that out into the universe. Here's our PO box. I was very into this shirt, but they have to learn that they're gonna win. I mean, this was a good speech. I mean, it's undercut by the fact that then production got boys in wigs to play the final game. But yes. But Rodney Dangerfield gives a speech. You don't need a boy to help you win. You're women. You don't need anyone. You're liberated. You got the vote. You can burn your bras when you get them. <laughs> you don't need a guy to win. You're yeah. strong, independent women, and blah, 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 blah. And yeah, and he, you know, gives a, a silly, nice little speech and about it. Was. it. Yeah, in, it was a, good. in a tent full of day glow uh, tie dyed. Yeah. Meanwhile, Matthew goes to get Kimberly. I've got something to show you. Oh my God! Oh my God! Kimberly, I have something very important to show you. Oh my God! Oh, right. And then they come back and you think, oh, gosh, Martha is going to play again. But no. He says, y'all don't need Martha. Martha's dead. I mean, you know, that's a little well, when they when they reveal it to all the girls, oh, oh. my God, I could you know, I couldn't, but can you imagine? The whole time? What? The whole time? I, what? Oh, my God. What? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Good bit of business. Everyone gets a little, um, you know, mini arc, arc right? Uh, the the goalie girl gets, you know, the butterflies and the butterflies on the ball, yeah. and um, and then she is like, "I'm ready. I can I'm be ready. goalie. Put me back in. Put me in, coach." She nails it. Kimberly, you know, makes her field goal. Um, the oh, girl, no. <laughs> oh, not her field goal. The penalty kick. The penalty kick to save the day and win the game. <laughs> Her Sports. dad can't watch because he's an asshole. Sports. Well, they were pretty drunk on champagne at that That's point. True. I mean, they brought all their bougie country I mean, club this friends. Was so, I loved the, just the, the Porsche in the background picnic with the champagne coupes. It was so, it was so good. What is this? Into it. Uh, oh, right, because um, we forgot about halftime with the terrible marching band. <laughs> And oh, yeah. The giant weenie and weenie girl. Oh, and the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile, which That's they changed the name to. And the giant weenie and the weenie lady. Of uh, recently. Why? Perfect. Uh, Why right. did you 
They changed it to like the oh, sausage bus or mess something. With, why would I you for, mess with perfection? I do not know. Exactly. With a brand recognition that everyone has for literal decades, I don't know. Okay. Yep. To go warm up the uh, weenies. Yeah, there you go. I gotta go warm up the uh, weenies. Well, and then at the end, so, you know, dramatic. I mean, the sports in this is... Inconsequential, um, which is the way a sports movie should be. I agree. Uh, more Rodney Dangerfield, less sports. That's my motto. <laughs> and um, but the music. Remember when it started to get like Fifth Element operatic? Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. very. I was like, what's this now? They win the big oh game. Oh my god, he gets the big promotion. We um, cut to. Oh, I guess I'll just. Here's a. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll find all of the horrific uh, wigs and shots oh, of boy. boys playing soccer with truly horrific wigs. Yep. And I'll just. Put them right here. Slow motion, and you can revel in their terribleness. <laughs> Oh, it's been a great gangbusters year. You got such a you're vice president now or whatever. Of, uh, we don't know what we don't know what they do. Does. We don't know what they do. Maybe they and, just build models. And having all of the the sports teams has been really beneficial for their image. And I was like, what? Well, Mr. Vice President, I'm very proud of you. This new year-round sports program of yours has been very good for Mullen Industries' profile. It's all of these boys, but then they get off the bus and they're all in, in drag. And Tommy Lasorda yeah. comes up. Hey, are you Coach Chester Lee? That's right. I'm Coach Cannoli. Isn't that a baseball player? The the coach guy that comes up at the end is like, I heard you're dressing up. You dressed up a boy as a girl on the soccer I mean, team. I I'll be honest, I had to look it up. But yes, Tommy Lasorda. Great. I like that I knew that that name was a baseball player. I knew that name, like I, but I could not. I was like, that's a sports person. He was a man, the manager for the Dodgers. I think yeah, I think so. For quite a while. The LA Dodgers. Yeah, it wasn't he wasn't back in like 1930 doing the before they moved. Shut up. I don't know. Uh, once again, I only know that because of some like it hot. Oh. Put the clip right here. What are you worried about? This job is going to last a long time. I suppose it doesn't. Jerry boy, why do you have to paint everything so black? Oh, suppose you got hit by a truck. Suppose the stock market crashes. Suppose Mary Pickford divorces Douglas Fairbanks. Suppose the Dodgers leave Brooklyn. Um, and, you know, Rodney Dangerfield, woo I finally got some respect. Take it! You're on top of the world. So, that is Ladybugs. The, I mean, it's pretty classic. It's, it's something. I feel like more people are aware of Ladybugs than some of the, some of the other ones some in the, the series. Ones. Anyway, make sure to subscribe and come back for part two, where we will talk about Surf Ninjas. With crotchety athletic supporters. Cheers. Cheers. If you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter.